and welcome to the latest anime news for the week ending June 27th, 2020. This week is a pretty heavy one for anime announcements, and it was a big week for video game announcements as well, so it only makes sense that some of these things go together like peanut butter and chocolate for those of you not allergic to peanut search, whatever. Our first two new anime this week are both adapted from popular video games. First up, game developer CD Projekt Red uh, revealed a lot of updates about their upcoming game Cyberpunk 2077 this week, including the announcement that the franchise will also include an anime series. The Netflix original series, sadly, titled Cyberpunk Edge Runners, will tell an original story set in the same universe as the game. Now, according to the press release, and I will quote, Cyberpunk Edge Runners tells a standalone 10 episode story about a street kid trying to survive in a technology and body modification obsessed city of the future. Having everything to lose, he chooses to stay alive by becoming an edge runner, a mercenary outlaw also known as a cyberpunk. End quote. The anime will be made at Studio Trigger, so this is definitely one to keep an eye on. It'll be directed by Hiroyuki Imaishi, who directed a few other Trigger anime you might have heard of, like, uh, let's see here, Gurren Lagann, Kill la Kill, and Promare. Several other main staff members from those properties will also be working on the new anime, along with staff who worked on BNA Brand New Animal and Little Witch Academia. So I'm sure a lot of attention will be on this. Sadly, the anime isn't set to premiere until 2022, so we'll have to wait quite a while. In the meantime, interested fans can check out the game, which is set to debut on November 19th. Also a bit of a wait, but at least a little bit earlier, you know. The second video game to get an anime this week is a bit more of a niche title, but no less beloved by its fans. Square Enix's The World Ends With You. An official teaser website revealed the news on Friday, and further information will be announced during next weekend's Anime Expo Lite. Love that art style, by the way. In fact, the physical Anime Expo guidebook was going to have the World Ends With You art on the cover as pictured, and I guess now we know why. Uh, definitely makes sense. The action role-playing game debuted on Nintendo DS back in 2007. It's set in modern-day Shibuya, or modern day as of 07, and includes elements of urban fantasy and an emphasis on elements of Japanese youth culture. In the story, a group of teenagers are brought to an alternate plane of existence and forced to play an unknown game, capital G, to determine their fate. Meta. The game also inspired a smartphone version in 2012 and a final remix version for the Nintendo Switch, which came out in 2018. So definitely some uh, excitement around that property in recent years. Next up, a reboot of a franchise from the 90s updated for the modern day, which of course means it now has a super long title. A new manga is coming based on 1997's Battle Athletes franchise, and it was announced this week that the manga will also have an anime adaptation. So cool. The new manga titled Pale Blue Dot Battle Athletes Victory Restart because light novels have apparently ruined us for normal anime titles, debuted this pro or its prologue chapter on Friday and will launch its first two chapters in July. It'll tell a completely new story set 100 years after the first series, still featuring elite athletes of the distant future competing to become Cosmo Beauty. I'm a big fan of the original uh, Battle Athletes series, so this is fun news for me. Uh, the original Battle Athletes included both an OVA and a television anime, both debuting in 1997, the series featured a retelling of the story of the OVA, but with obviously differences in plot and characterization. The franchise also included manga, video games, novels, and radio dramas. Significant little mini franchise there. Now, a website also opened this week to announce that Toy Animation is producing a television anime adaptation of the children's novel series Fushigi Dagashiya Zenitendo, Hope I'm pronouncing that right. Probably not. Written by Reiko Hiroshima and illustrated by Jadya, the novel story centers on the mysterious candy and snack shop Zenitendo, which only lucky people are able to find. The shop's proprietor, Beniko, can recommend the perfect candy for each person's troubles, but be careful, as the people who eat or use the confections incorrectly might find things don't turn out quite as they hoped. Hmm. 
the series' first volume debuted in 2013, and Kaiseisha released the 13th volume this April. So, definitely significant. The novels are also inspiring a segment in the upcoming toy manga Matsuri Omnibus film, which was scheduled to premiere in April until it was indefinitely delayed uh, because of, guess what? That's right, coronavirus. Hope to see more of that soon, however. Now, if you're looking for something short to watch right now, how about a kid ninja? Because we can never have enough of those in anime, apparently. The first episode of a short net anime based on the Nintendo Switch game Ninjala began streaming this week. The free-to-play multiplayer action game also launched this week, made by Gung Ho Online Entertainment. The game is, and I quote, a morphing ninja gum action game, gum, not gun, that allows players to blow bubble gum to craft weapons and use the unconventional fighting method ninjutsu. Which, end quote, which to be fair, sounds downright bizarre, but the game is actually quite cute and well-reviewed. It, it looks fun. The anime adaptation, uh, subtitled Blood of the Shinobi, features young boy Van, or Vaughn, who is given a special ninja gum by his father. He finds out that the blood of the shinobi runs in his family, and that chewing the gum will allow him to unlock his hidden ninja powers, because that's clearly how that works. The first 10-minute episode is streaming on Ninjala's YouTube channel in both English and Japanese. Very nice. So if you're looking for some gum-chewing ninja fighting action, give it a try. And again, Ninjala does look cute and fun. Um, and uh, our last new anime announcement for this week, at least. Everyone, Everybody remember everything so far? We're all clear? All right. Animator and illustrator Lone Draw announced this week he is producing a short theatrical anime film as a part of his multimedia project, Project Common. Not much was announced beside that, so we'll have to wait for more specifics in the future. However, um, the theme of Project Common is to, quote, express the true lone draw. The illustrator said he wants to find his steadfast self, explaining... This project is to find the true lounge draw, probably loon draw, whatever, with myself and everyone. Creator from Lounge Draw's Flat Studio, which he founded in January of 2019, are contributing to the project, as well as members from the Kotsu Kotsu story production team. Lounge Draw previously created the original character designs for the Tsukigakire anime series, as well as the character designs and front cover for Yori Sumino's I Want to Eat Your Pancreas novel. Which, yes, that's actually a thing. It's complicated. <clears throat> All right, now that does it for the anime announcements, at least for this week, which means what's next? Hmm. That's right, online event announcements. The official website for the 2020 Tokyo Game Show announced this week that the event will be following on with the summer's other uh, major events and moving to an online streaming format. Anyone surprised? Any, no, I figured not. The game show will be held across the weekend. It was originally scheduled for September 24th to 27th, with September 23rd added to the schedule as a day for business discussions only, i.e. a business-focused day so that, you know, press and so forth and all that kind of stuff can happen. Um, the event plans to host streams of programs and videos, as well as an eSports tournament. Uh, they're also currently accepting submissions for online exhibitors, which is kind of interesting. Last year's physical Tokyo Game Show drew more than 262,000 attendees over the course of four days, so they currently definitely have the draw. Adult Swim, meanwhile, is also getting on the online event action. They've announced the upcoming Adult Swim Con, a free event to take place over the weekend of July 23rd to 25th. In addition to exclusive events featuring its Western properties, the con will feature a cosplay cup, a content uh, and content from Toonami. So far, we know Toonami's presence will include interviews and information regarding the upcoming Uzumaki and Blade Runner Black Lotus anime series, as well as upcoming show announcements. So some interesting things could certainly be announced there. Toonami does some, or Adult Swim rather, does some fun stuff. Now, while the decisions have yet to be made regarding any kind of official memorial being built after Lathimer's tragic arson at Kyoto Animation's first studio building, 
the locals from Kikugawa City in the Shizuoka Prefecture have created a tribute to one of the animators lost in the fire in their own special way. A recreation of an artwork from animator Yuki Omura has been recreated at, uh, across a rice field. The art comes from a picture book Omura created when he was in university and it depicts the story's final scene when the protagonist is reunited with his parents. Kikugawa's Tanbo Art Rice Field regularly features artwork created for, uh, from the rice growing in the paddies, uh, so this is an ongoing thing. Apparently, Omura himself used to enjoy visiting with his family to see the artwork, and a new tribute to Omura's work was created using 10 different types of rice plants, some of which were actually planted by Omura's parents. The organizer of the tribute, Tadashi Ikeda, said, quote, I still cannot find the words to describe the loss of this great aspiring man. I want many people to come out and see this artwork, end quote. Let's hope that many people do, and that the beautiful tribute can bring some comfort to his family and his friends, and to all those who lost someone during the fire. Lovely tribute, don't you think? <clears throat> Excuse me. Now, we usually like to wrap up the news segment with something more lighthearted and fun. Our final two news stories this week both offer different ways of abetting loneliness a little during our long isolation. First up, a virtual maid cafe will be opening its figurative doors this summer. Tokyo-based company Infinia, known for successful maid cafe chain At Home Cafe, good name, has announced their new virtual At Home Cafe. The service will allow patrons to interact with 3D virtual maids through their phone or computer after buying some of these special currency, of course. The press release announcing the event gives a wonderful summary of what the experience aims to be. Quote, you access the virtual space from your smartphone and transform into Goshujin-sama or Ojo-sama, master or lady, in an avatar. Then you can enjoy conversations, playing games, and taking pictures with cute maids who have become virtual characters through virtual at home cafe which has evolved over the past 20 years since the birth of the maid cafe we will bring the ultimate virtual moe to you end quote finally if anybody happens anybody watching this happens to have a spare forty thousand dollars lying around have i got the announcement for you and yes that's forty thousand us dollars not forty thousand yen right stuff open pre-orders this week for the North American release of the life-sized figure of Rem for, from ReZero. She stands 5.2 feet tall, not including her parasol, and weighs 125 pounds. But don't worry, shipping, insurance costs, and duty fees are all included in the technically $39,999.99 asking price. But if you're considering taking out a reverse mortgage or selling some organs, you better act fast, as only three of these made-to-order figures have been manufactured for North American fans. So get on it, people. That's all the news for this week. Thanks for watching.